Welcome to the Ansible series. In order to properly follow these tutorials, we'll need to have a real remote server accessible via SSH. You can choose whatever provider you like, but if you don't know which one to pick, I strongly suggest giving SkySilk a try. This cloud service provider offers fast and scalable cloud VPS for as little as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to sign up, get some credit and start testing your cloud VPS. I'm gonna boot up a Pico instance, the cheapest available, and hook it up to my SSH key. If you don't have an SSH key, you don't know what it is, or you're totally confused about this, I suggest taking a look at my short series Intro to DevOps, where you will learn all the basics to follow these tutorials. SkySilk takes just few seconds to activate and deploy our VPS. Perfect. Now that we have this new fancy cloud server, it's usually standard practice to access it via SSH, running some updates and start installing the usual bundle of packages like PHP, NGINX or Apache, MySQL, maybe set up a new user and so on. All these things are fairly standard and easy to do on a single server, but imagine if you have to do it really quickly for multiple servers at once, and you have to repeat the same process tomorrow. You can see how it can get really tedious. Also, as a generic rule of thumb, you shouldn't access your server via SSH other than when strictly necessary. That's why we will use Ansible, the IT automation tool. Ansible is an agentless tool based on Python. Agentless means that you don't need to install anything on the machine you want to affect or control. So if you have, for example, three servers that you want to manage at once, you can simply have Ansible install install on your personal laptop and trigger all the actions and specific commands that will affect those servers without the necessity of physically installing or configuring anything on those servers. It's also daemonless, meaning that even if it's installed on your computer, you don't need any daemon or app constantly running in the background as a process. Everything is based and managed with a bunch of YAML files and the conversation between Ansible and your servers is done via the OpenSSH protocol. This approach makes Ansible the safest choice for IT automation because it doesn't require any script or package installed anywhere other than your personal computer. Let's install Ansible on our computer and take a quick look on how easy it is to open a connection with our newly deployed VPS. Open the terminal and type sudo apt install Ansible. The package will automatically install some Python dependencies necessary for the tool to run. The total size of installed packages should be around 60 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long. If you type which Ansible in your terminal, you should get the location of where the Ansible machine control was installed, and you can also check the installed version by typing Ansible dash dash version. Let's see how easy it is for Ansible to ping and interact with our cloud VPS. Let's type sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash Ansible forward slash hosts. This is the inventory file where you can write all the IP addresses or URLs of the servers you need to manage. I'm gonna simply paste the IP address of my recently deployed SkySeal VPS. Let's save this file and close it. Now we can check if Ansible is capable of opening a connection with my VPS. So let's type ansible all dash m ping, you will most likely get an error, and that's because Ansible by default uses your current username, in my case Alicad, which is most likely not the same user of your remote server. We can specify a custom username with the dash u option. Let's type once again ansible all dash m ping dash u root, which is the name of the default user on an Ubuntu server. And there you go. Ansible successfully opened a remote connection to our VPS. This seems like a small thing, but it's actually really powerful as we were able to talk with our VPS without manually opening an SSH connection or the necessity of installing any script or set up a dedicated port on our remote VPS. In the next video, we're gonna start creating some simple actions like how to deploy multiple files at once on multiple servers. Well, that's pretty much it. 
Give it a like or subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching and until the next one, as usual, happy coding.